right, all right, all right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Uh, today, my guest is Ray Eversall hanging out in Eugene, Oregon. Ray, how you doing, my brother? What's up, Jason? Great to hear from you. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, you're probably the only thing giving me a reason to get dressed right now, so this is good for me. Nice. Feeling good. Yeah, I shaved up and everything for this bad dude, so we're ready to rock, man. Looking all super sexy for the cameras. You're also looking fantastic over there. That's a great backdrop for Skype. I can see your Jack's right. guitar kicking it, and I love it, man. So how's uh, oh, yeah. how's Eugene doing, man? How's the, uh, the Rona treating you out there, brother? Well, things are really mellow here. We don't have a huge outbreak. Um, initially, I was so nervous and very paranoid, but... I'm kind of more relaxed now when I go out. I have, you know, the doctor's masks on, and I think that helps a lot. Um, but I've been really just staying home. I don't go out a lot. Pretty much just doing what we're supposed to, just going out for the uh, bare necessities. And uh, it's usually stressful going out, just being around people. Um, other than that, you know, I think things are basically pretty normal. Kind of feels like I'm living in Groundhog's Day. I know. Um, but instead of Puck Satani, we're in uh, Eugene, so it's kind of mellow. That's People nice, cool at least. Here. Everyone's being nice to each other. That's killer. Yeah, everybody's always so nice out in Eugene, man. I love it out there. I, I go every year. That's my favorite place to vacation. Um, but I have still been, uh, you know, open carrying. Damn right. You know, a gun, just because I figured, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I actually, I thought it was going to be more like black friday at walmart or something like that um so it, it definitely feels weird as i'm getting out there i have the mask and of course i got a pistol on my hip and uh it is different for me i don't usually do something like that but you never know when you might need it and it's kind of funny i mean actually i don't think anyone even notices that i am carrying um i figured you know maybe they would you know kind of notice and maybe be intimidated a little bit but they're not <laughs> they're still being super nice so i think next time i go to the store and, and instead of an open carrying you know the pistol i'm thinking of bringing maybe a, a big kitchen knife or something like that that'll keep people just as, you know let them know you're serious <laughs> you know what i mean brandishing a big kitchen knife. well yeah they can't business. mess with me <laughs> <laughs> that's so great man i love it so stores are doing good out there then, huh, man? The, the Rona's Everything not really taking you guys down like uh, the news wants to say? Well, um, there's definitely some positive cases. Uh, I took a look at some numbers. We're at 1785 positive, and we have 70 deaths. But they've been from the ages of 40 up, and almost all of them are from the ages of 80 and up. Oh, yeah, so it's just taking down the uh, the older people for the most part, right? For the most part, I think. Um, but it seems like these younger guys, I mean, they're just going all around playing Frisbee and whatever else. I'm seeing people at the store, like, just getting cookies and orange soda, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to... You got to keep your snacks fucking rocking when well, yeah, you're stuck I know on the couch you have all a, day uh, watching Netflix, right? <laughs> So. You're known to have a sweet tooth, I hear. I know you like your cookies, so I can't totally talk shit. I do have a little <laughs> bit of a sweet tooth. That is very true. My girl makes me uh, back off the sugar whenever we start doing our little sober kicks here and there. She includes that on sure. me because she's like, you fucking love that stuff so much. And I do. I'm, uh, I am I have my little vices, you know. I think getting well, you got to. eating cookies isn't the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Especially when you're stuck on the couch all freaking day. For sure. Yeah. But, yeah, man, it's uh, it's good times. What have you been doing whenever uh, you're stuck on the couch all day watching Netflix these days? Um, actually, I, I mean, I can really sit there and watch TV, you know. I don't know. I wouldn't say very long. Like, I'm a pretty active person. I got to get up and move around, and I might, um, you know, pause it for a minute and maybe come back and finish the movie later just because like i don't know i i don't i don't like sitting around a lot i like keeping busy and doing things so you've been keeping busy man you got uh you've been playing with your buddies or uh writing some new music or anything like that um well yeah i've definitely been writing a lot i got the guitar in hand um probably half the day just trying to keep busy keep the chops up a little bit 
Um, but I'm not associating with any of the uh, the guys from the band right now. I might give them a quick call to see how they're doing. But, um, you know, I asked them, I said, what do you guys do? Do you guys go to the store and just suck up and kind of lay low or what? And they're like, yeah, man, I just go to the store to get beer. But th I know those guys, it's every day. Yeah. So I, just, I don't know. I kind of decided to um, take a break from jamming with them and just focus on uh, maybe getting some new riffs together and have something to bring back to the table, you know, when we meet again, which who knows when that'll be. Yeah, no shit. Oh, I look forward to hearing that, man. Uh, I, I love your guys' music, and I love what you write, brother. I heard, uh, and speaking of, like, the beer stuff, man, I heard they're doing beer deliveries down here in Las Vegas. You guys got the beer delivery service out in Oregon? They, they, uh, well, they not yet. Um, I think they're they're delivering uh, marijuana, no. but no beer from what I know. I mean, uh, I think that's really cool that they are delivering beer and everything. Uh, you know, hopefully they tip those guys well. That stuff is heavy. You know, you get, a, right. you get enough hands under your belt. Yeah, man, it's doing anything you can to stay alive in the uh, in the apocalypse, man. Got to stay entertained. Got to stay hydrated with plenty of uh, sure. beverages, right? Yeah, around here, I mean, things have been so mellow. Um, I think people still have a little bit of a sense of humor. They're so nice to each other. I mean, I drove by the funeral home the other day, and uh, even they seem to be laughing about some stuff. They uh, Right now, they're having a uh, shop till you drop sale. Ha. Not very tasteful, but, you know, it's probably good for business. Go pick out your casket early, just in case. Got to be safe. You never know. You want to go into the ground in style, you know. For sure. <laughs> kiss That's coffin. Funny. The kiss co coffin is amazing. I totally would get a kiss coffin if I wasn't going to have them, like, burn my body up and just disintegrate me. Yeah, I think that's kind of the way to go. Yeah. It's clean. It is. And it leaves uh, less bullshit for your family members to deal with, you know? It's like it's so expensive sure. to have a proper funeral and bury your body. And then what do you need your fucking body rotten in the ground for? Nobody needs your well, I, fucking ass rotten in the ground, you know? Of course, yeah. And I didn't know this until uh, maybe a few years back, but I guess they still make you charge, um, excuse me, they charge you rent on your, your plot there oh. as time goes on even. So it's not just like, hey, you pay your money and later... No shit, I didn't know that. I did not know that. See, even more reason to get uh, to get burnt up and uh, and disappear. I like right. that, anyways. It's cleaner, you know. Like you're never there in the first place. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, ashes aren't a bad thing. On occasion, I'll get someone bringing in a family member's ashes to kind of mix in with the uh, the tattoo ink and tattoo of them. I've heard. I of mean, that. I'm I'm sure it doesn't go into the skin, but yeah, it makes them feel better. Yeah, you know, it makes it uh, makes it part. Usually, what like doing portrait pieces of like the fallen fallen person or something like that, sure. right? Their lost brother or some shit. Yeah, that's like that's a cool thing, you know, paying tribute. And you know, I can totally see that. Respect it is that. kind of funny though. I mean, especially when you're related, it's like, uh, well, you have their blood. Come on. <laughs> right. It's like you're already uh, they're already part of you, man. You know, they always will be. But, yeah, speaking of tattoos, man, you sent me some pretty cool stuff over here. I have some interesting tattoo links uh, to share with our viewers here. I got, uh, let's see here. We got this bad dude right here, this Brom Bowl on a uh, homie's bicep. Your shading techniques are kind of way better, man. I love it. Oh, thank you so much. Every time I see your work, it's always super, super good. You know, I think that's kind of the key. You got to keep trying to get better. Yeah, look at this skull all the way around this dude's leg. That is a huge friggin' skull, man. That's awesome. Any piece in particular you wanted to talk about in these? Uh, I got this badass sleeve up, this full color sleeve. Did you just hold the, all of the color on this sleeve? We did. Uh, we started there um, with the upper arm, and it's poppies and roses. In, in that particular case, it's just um, a customer that I newly meet. And they, she came to me and she just said, hey, I want some poppies and some gears. Roll with it. She just let me do whatever I wanted to do. That's the best and that's pretty much what came out. But as time went on and we developed the full sleeve, she wanted to have more of a, you know, kind of uh, branch out a little bit. 
And the rest of it is based on um, a graphic novel by Neil Gaiman, which is called Sandman. So you'll see the um, there's a raven, a key, the heart. All those things are part of that. And the strange looking mask as well. Okay, yeah, we saw the strange mask earlier. It is the heart you're talking about. That looks killer on the in, inside the pit too. That's gonna suck. Oh yeah, yeah. That um, there's actually a little birdie there that's hidden there in the actual ditch of the arm. I see that now. I see that. I didn't see it. It is kind of hidden in there, but yeah, yeah that yeah. one was a little tricky. That that skin there is very sensitive. Does not like to be tattooed. Yeah, I have. I have yet to get any of the pits done on my uh, on my legs or my arms. I'm not looking. To not looking forward to that that's a beautiful piece though man what a cool thank piece. you so much how long did that take you it's really hard to say um it's, it's just something you do over time we may have a session that goes for two or three hours and then time to take a break and we usually go downstairs from the shop and get a beer and uh, kind of just hang out and plan out the next idea nice man yeah, that shit came out great, bro. Oh, and here's another one you guys sent me. Uh, so when did you do this? This is uh, like some flowers and a uh, skull image on this chick's thigh. That's a pretty recent one. Just uh, another case, you know, where someone says, hey, I uh, how about a skull and some sunflowers? And I kind of roll with it. Decided to uh, flip that job the other way to just to be different yeah, like and maybe that, like give it a little more dynamic. Nice, man. Yeah, this come, this come out great, man. Yeah, and this antelope skull that came out killer, killer shading. And I like this octopus with the tentacles. That came out really good, too, man. That one was a lot of fun. I definitely wouldn't mind having a, you know, a smaller session just to kind of uh, rework some of the suckers there. But that was a lot of fun. That's a recent one that I did. Right, that's got to be frustrating sometimes, you know, the client only has so much time and money to let you work on them, and then, uh, yeah, then you're stuck with just whatever was left over, you know, it's like always, uh, sometimes you get unfinished tattoos that you're stuck with. For sure, um, it's always nice when they come back. Yeah, and this one is my favorite on the list, of course, because we're in quarantine. We got the Tiger King tattoo. Well, it's not really a Tiger King tattoo, but it's this badass tiger you've done this dude's forearm. And I oh, it's actually it. a young lady. Oh, is that a young Oh, really? It is. Oh, okay, cool, tight. That's awesome. So is that going to turn into a sleeve? I did do some work after that, but I wasn't really so excited about her ideas. Oh, I yeah. think whatever I did add was, uh, it was fine, but... I think it looks better just how it is right there. We added in some kind of geometrical shapes with something else. And uh, it was in a case where I, I told her, hey, you know, it looks good how it is. But they kind of uh, will push you at times to say, this is what I want. And it's just, it's kind of part of the job. You have to go with it. You know, they, t they pretty much tell me what to tattoo. Oh well, yeah, right. They're the, the, if they the give customer. me a little artistic freedom, that's great, but it's not something I can always expect. More often than not, they'll, they will say, no, I want it like this instead. And in some cases, though, their idea is better than what I would have came up and what I imagined. And uh, I'm not too excited about that, but when they're right, they're right. Ah. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, these pieces came out great. You know, that's just fantastic and i really I just go back to that arm sleeve one last time for the viewers out there that's just some fantastic work man and uh yeah you do it out of uh what's the name of your shop again up in eugene ritual tattoo ritual tattoo up in eugene oregon yeah man your shit is killing it bro and of course you've been doing that big that big kiss piece on my back, which I just friggin' love, man. You know, I love my back piece to death. I got I can't wait to come up and do some more work with you on that, and then start on the other side and have some fun. Sounds great. Um, I've really been wanting to get back out there to Vegas and uh, spend some time. I was actually just about to get some airline tickets to come hang out, but with everything going on. Goddamn virus! It's uh, not really gonna happen anytime soon. Well, once this virus clears up, man, you can come down anytime. You know, you always got a place to stay. We just got the uh, spare bedroom all set up, and 
I got an Great. Xbox up there and surround sound and shit, man. You got like a fucking nice ass little uh, spare bedroom with a extra bath and everything, brother. So you, you, you and Noel, you're always welcome up here anytime. Right? I should Thank say down so here out in Las Vegas. But yeah, you're I'll, always welcome. I was actually curious. Um, so I, I imagine right now you guys have very sunny, hot weather, right? We uh, we were having some pretty sunny weather, and then uh, what? Like the last couple of days, it's been overcast rainy i'm loving it it's really nice sure. it started getting hot and we were like oh here it comes and then it got overcast again real fast and we're like ah oh, one one last breath before you know the whole fucking place turns into an oven right well i keep hearing people say that when the warm weather comes then things will clear up with the virus but if you guys are having problems and it's super hot i imagine that's not going to be a factor yeah you know it uh it really, it should heat up pretty quickly here. I mean, once May hits, you know, it gets fucking hot out in Vegas, and it's going to stay hot until September, October. So the virus is screwed at that point, man, and hopefully this quarantine ends a lot faster than uh, some of the right. other places in the country that are a little more humid or colder, you know, where the virus can thrive. But, yeah, we're looking forward to it, man. It's, uh, it's going to be... Uh, the best to get out of the freaking house and just get to hang out and start doing like person to person podcasts as opposed to the Skype For things. Sure. And, uh, we got a lot of videos planned. We got a lot of sketches planned and, you know, we ought to be in the same room to, uh, record that stuff once it's going. So it, uh, it'll be a relief. I am dying for this fucking quarantine to lift. Yeah. I can't wait to get back to normal. I haven't tattooed in about six weeks or so. I miss Oof. it so much. Yeah, you're not tattooing yourself or nothing? I thought about it. Yeah, man. That's how I learned how to tattoo, man. Just fucking screwed my leg all up, man. And made a mess of things. And then I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. I guess I get the idea. I never became any good at it, though, as you know. Well, many people, even professional artists, going into the business when they're apprenticing, they will make you tattoo yourself. That way, you ha definitely, like... You will have a feel for how much pressure you need to use, and it's kind of helpful since you can feel it yourself. You're oh, not yeah. going to go too deep, not like you would on someone else because you can't feel it. But I've never tattooed myself. <laughs> it's not that bad, honestly. Like, once you get started, it's like you're more focused on getting a straight line and not fucking your tattoo right. up than the pain. Like, you, you're, you're really focused on, on, uh, on getting the good art out. And, you know, the pain just kind of disappears mm -hmm. whenever your your mind's focused on something else like that, which is really nice to know whenever you go get tattoos later. But, yeah, although I'm not the best about that, you know. Fucking <laughs> ticklish motherfucker is what I am. More than the pain. Oh, no shit. Yeah, but it's fun, man. I fucking can't wait to get some more ink done, man. Can't wait. Sounds good. What's the next piece you're getting done on you? Uh, I do have an idea, actually. I'd like to get um, a pretty big piece on my bicep on on uh, this arm here. I don't have anything. And I want to get an upside-down bat with uh, kind of like frames with very sharp thorns going around. I kind of ha I have some uh, references set aside. And there's uh, definitely some artists that I have in mind that I'm thinking about going through. I'm very excited to do it. It just doesn't seem like the right time. Yeah. You know, we're usually busy doing things at the shop and things like that. And um, yeah, between music and art, um, I tend to keep pretty busy. But maybe next time I uh, come visit in Vegas, I'll get get some uh, tattoo work done. Oh, yeah. We got killer artists out here in Vegas, man. Some of the best in the world. I think so. Yeah. I, uh, shout out to my boy Dave Liu, of course, who fucking did my leg. I love my, uh, my knee sock very much. I gotta go get that shit finished and have it be a full leg sleeve soon. But, uh, yeah, some of the best artists in the world out here, man. And, yeah, we love our artists out here in Las Vegas. Well, yeah, that's where I started tattooing, and I was so lucky to be able to work with these great artists and develop proper technique and... You know, I think more than anything, that's helped me so much. Oh, yeah, man. Nothing like uh, trial and error and just tons of fucking experience to yep. get your shit tight. Well, you can also learn from other people's mistakes. If there's someone that you work with and 
you know, they're no good, they're dirty, they're they're cross contaminating all over the place. You can learn you can learn from those guys too. Oh yeah, right? What not to do. That's always a big exactly. part of everything, you know. <laughs> Some people I think get put in your life just to uh just to show you your own flaws, you know. You see uh see parts of yourself that reflect in others that uh you don't like and you start going, I ain't fucking doing that no more you know. That is obviously oh, yeah. that, that annoys the hell out of me when someone else does that in my presence or to me, you know, and it's like, yeah, I can't be doing that around other people. That's ridiculous. It's a good growing experience. Sometimes for those, sure. Sometimes those fucking people that just drive you crazy are there for a reason. When I was apprenticing, um, early on in my apprenticeship, there was a guy that I saw, like he had this problem. His, uh, his sharps container was overflowing with dirty needles. Ugh. And instead of calling, you know, a health authority of some type to come pick up the needles, which I believe they do for free, he reached in with his bare hands, grabbed all of them, and taped them all up, um, put them in some sort of a plastic bag, and had one of the other apprentices uh, drop it off behind another tattoo shop into their dumpster. What the f- Fuck, that is some shady shit right there, man. Uh, but once again, it's uh, it's a learning process. You got to learn from these things. Yeah, don't do that. There's some simple rules when it comes to dealing with uh, biohazardous material, man, and you should definitely follow them every step of the way. But if anyone decides to do that, please put on some gloves. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> He's just reaching his hand into a uh, biohazardous fucking uh, wasteland down there. That's just insane to me. Well, it is scary. I mean, you got needles. They're not all pointing in the same direction. It's kind of, you know, they're going all over the place. Yeah. You got to watch it. That is not a good time. You're not going to have a good time reaching into a biohazard container full of fucking old tattoo needles. How gross, man. Well, that's that's ridiculous. What uh, what else you got in those, man? You got any other good uh, good life lessons from some fucking dumbass tattoo artists? Uh, it's it's kind of hard to say. I mean, you yeah. pick up little things here and there. Um, more than anything, though, it's it's just great. You know, I love talking with other tattooers. You know, there's all these funny stories. You know, everyone's everyone's got one. You know, like uh, for example, I remember um. You know, early on at the same shop starting out, I tattooed this guy and, uh, you know, he came in, he was seemed to have kind of a somber mood. And um, he said that he wanted to get his, uh, his friend's initial put on his arm. And I uh, kind of had that in the back of my, my mind, like it's a memorial piece, you know, like uh, do this one really well, take your time, make sure he's happy, because it means a lot. And I uh, started getting curious during the tattoo process, and I had to ask. I said, uh, so uh, what happened to your friend, if you don't mind me asking? He said, nothing. He's sitting over there on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking goober. That's so great. I love that. It's just, that's just best of buds right there. Did his friend get uh, his initials tattooed on him as well? Or that was just... No way. No, they didn't go both directions, huh? No. Nope. No, nah, that was just uh, one homie sharing his love for another homie in a forever kind of way. Fucking ridiculous people. Yeah, and another kind of funny story is um, my friend Alex. Like, this isn't my story, but... This guy, Alex, he's the one I really learned from. Fantastic artist. Anyways, we were kind of bullshitting, you know, in between tattoos and everything. And he's telling me the story of, um, he's like, you know, given uh, aftercare instructions, you know, you tell him, hey, you know, um, go easy on it. Don't take, you know, long showers. Don't do this, do this, don't do that, lotion, whatever. And this guy kind of got the uh, aftercare directions mixed up so he calls up alex he says hey alex uh it's been two weeks can i take a shower now oh no dude take a shower shower normally (laughs) (laughs) but there's just a million i don't think i've ever gone two weeks of a shower that's disgusting yeah i mean and and that stuff cracks me up i mean i just think of these things and i just laugh i mean it is great 
Uh, I had a, a woman, uh, I did a tattoo party, and this, uh, this chick had a great piece picked out before she came. I don't remember what it was. This is fucking, like, forever ago. But then she got kind of drunk at the party, and she picked out this horrible, ugly bumblebee, and she had me do that Ooh. instead. And I tried to get convince her to do the original piece, which I did the stencil for and everything. And then I see her the next day, and uh, bitch is freaking out about her tattoo. And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, well, i just been scrubbing it with a loofah all day. Uh. And I was like, oh, my God, let me see it. It's just fucking falling off of her, you know? She's just destroying her skin. It's the, it, was, it was awful. Jeez. Needs to say, Doesn't... she ruined the ink, you know. It was like right of away, course, she went yeah. and just started scrubbing it with a loofah. And I was just like, hey, who told you to scrub this with a loofah? You know? <laughs> it's like ridiculous. I know. It's like no one uses washcloths anymore, right? Yeah, just put some fucking, just put some dial soap on your hand, antibacterial soap, and just, you know, gently clean the surface. Put a little well, you never know. Fuck, man. People will, people will uh, look on the internet or ask someone they know, and everybody will tell you something different. What's yeah. good? What's bad? Oh, I remember when I was learning, everybody had a fucking different opinion. And still to this day, as I, uh, I go to different artists, and different artists will tell me different care techniques for my tattoos. And, uh, and they all work. They all work, you know? I mean, I, I, I do a, a mixture of uh, different things now with my ink and uh and honestly you listen to everybody yeah you listen to everybody man <laughs> honestly like i i feel like uh well, i'm gonna follow the procedure of the artist that just did it right like he wants i don't know shit that's one of my my biggest things in life is that i don't know anything you know so i i listen and uh and yeah and, and so i whenever you do a tattoo i try to i try to follow your instructions on how to care for it and when dave does a tattoo on me i follow his instructions and my buddy Joel Kilmeister out in L.A. He's been doing some fun pieces on me as well. and uh, But for the most part, it's kind of become just like clean that shit and leave it alone has been the majority of like the care instructions. Put a little lotion on it. Make sure it doesn't scab up and fucking peel scabs off with your ink. And it's like you're fine. Scabs are no good. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's come a long way. I remember coming up, it was like fucking A&D all over it and wrapping it with saran wrap and fucking bandages and like treating it like a wound and now it's more like well treat it like a rash instead and just like give it a little love yeah i think more than anything oxygen is going to help you out let it get some air yeah i remember that from uh getting inked from you man you're always like let that fucker breathe just walk around my shirt off the whole day Yeah, man. Hopefully I'll be able to come down in August again or July, man. I would love to come down and fucking hang out again in the middle of summer. It's my favorite thing to get away from, uh, get the fuck out of Las Vegas when it's the hottest and come up to Oregon when it's just perfect weather. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, that's definitely the, the way to go. Even on the coast here, it's warm. Usually it's dark and rainy, but, yeah, you come in the summer and it is fantastic. Yeah, I love it up there, man. It's nice and all the, uh... All the hippie freaks, man. I love all the hippie freaks in Oregon, man. They're just amazing people, super nice people, and super yeah. unique individuals with unique skill sets and, and lifestyles. It's, it's super, it's fun. I, I just enjoy the entire experience and the energy of the people. Yeah, there's definitely no shortage of characters here. Characters indeed, right? Mm. And the best Chiba on the planet. I yeah, they know that. Bud. They know, they know what they're doing over here. Oh, yeah. You can just throw a fucking seed in the ground, and it'll grow perfectly with the humidity and the, the rain and everything out there. It's just perfect weather for, for sure. growing wheat, yep. man. And it's, you get the best shit. It's, it's, I, I love it. I, I can't get enough of it when I'm up there. It's super fun. But you try to. I do smoke a lot when I'm up there. It is, uh, it is my goal to smoke as many different kinds of amazing, beautiful, homegrown bud. You guys get to sell it right out of the, just like you can grow the weed and sell it out of the same like facility. Like there's some weird shit, like no one's out here growing and like, they're, oh yeah, I got a fucking farm in the back and you know, this is the most recent harvest and they just have jars of it on the shelf like they do in Oregon where it's just this, it's just cool vibe, man, where it's like, yeah, they, they you're buying it from the people that grew it. And it's, this is, you know, they put a lot of love into that product. It's not just some, 
some thing and some product that they're fucking just trying to sell you, you know? It's, this is their livelihood and they love it. They do it because they love it. Yeah, it's like anything, you know, there's uh, some people that do really well and some that do bad shit too. Yeah. But even if it's not that good, it's still pretty good. It's very good. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Speaking of, I might as well fucking do one of these right here and uh, spark up a hootie while we're fucking chit-chatting. Hell, yeah. What is that? A, uh, the Bob Marley special, or what is that? Uh, black cherry soda, man. It's like a hybrid sativa. It's delicious. It comes from Washington. Oh, no shit. Another beautiful fucking place full of uh, perfect humidity for, for growing some of the best plants around. I've been loving botany. Me and my brother both. We've been getting into botany a lot lately. It's pretty cool what happens to that shit. Do you guys grow anything uh, else? Like maybe uh, celery, green beans, carrots, anything like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's what I mean. Like, uh, like we've been doing a whole garden and we're actually considering expanding our garden experience because of the uh, recent circumstances with the world and everything we're like Absolutely. maybe we should be growing enough food to like actually live on as opposed to like oh we got some fresh tomatoes out of the backyard you know we can have those instead of the store-bought ones which is kind of our deal we're not really uh, I mean, we're just growing a couple things here and there yeah i got a little cool. planter it's nice it's fucking you know uh like 16 foot long planter and just full of little vegetables here and there man and uh we dig it we dig it it's working nice hooked up to the irrigation system and all automated watering and now it's all well, connected yeah, that to makes my it phone easy. And, and i could tell the alexis to water my plants when i want and change my watering schedule it's it's so easy now to hook all this oh stuff no up. shit you can do that with your phone huh oh yeah man yeah do you get a beehive and uh and it syncs right up to your irrigation system. It just replaces your irrigation timer, and then it's a fucking Wi-Fi device. That's fucking beautiful. I love all that synced-up Wi-Fi Alexa stuff, man. If I can't control it with my phone or with my voice, then I'm not interested in purchasing it anymore. Like, it's just dumb. It's dumb. I should be able to control it with my voice at this point. Like, this is Well, that was uh, the first time that I um, even knew that Alexis existed was at your house. Oh, really? I almost got when someone someone actually asked me. Um, they were trying to pick out a, a Christmas gift for me this past Christmas, and they asked if I wanted one, but but I said no. Um, I don't know. I kind of I don't, I don't know. I don't like the idea of someone just listening to me all the time. Yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah, there's no. Uh, I don't have any uh, denial about the fact that I have spyware just in every room in my house recording everything i say you know but uh i mean I not shit. that i'm doing anything i mean i'm what not up to something yeah <laughs> right but what if i want to be you know yeah well all of a sudden you just decide oh well these fucking things gotta go you know <laughs> i gotta get rid of this shit i gotta get a new cell phone that's not all synced up with facebook and sending all my fucking information to zuckerberg and you know uh it, it's real hard to be off the grid digitally these days i mean it is and participate with society i mean sure you could go fucking live in a cabin and get a well and some solar panels and not talk to anybody but like to actually exist in society and like function on the level that you need to function where you have a fucking email you need a device that can read those fucking emails that device has a microphone on it and a wi-fi connection now you're connected to the internet you have to fucking you know you got google on that computer or the whatever device google's now fucking listening to everything you say and they do. They listen to everything you say. And they track everything you, you uh, search so they can sell you shit. Well, yeah, I think that's most of what it is, is the uh, consumerism. It's uh, They just want to sell you stuff. And in a way, I get annoyed when I maybe look on eBay for, you know, maybe some cool guitar pedal I want to get or something. And then all these ads are all about that. And, yeah, it is a little bit of intrusive and annoying. But, hey, at least I'm not getting ads from baby diapers and whatever else. Yeah, I just embrace it, man. You know, it's the way the world's going. It's not going to get any better. You know, like it's going to get worse and worse. And um, a lot of the concept of like, oh, well, I don't want these these fucking Alexa devices spying on me in my house. It's like, well, you have a fucking cell phone. 
you know, like Siri spying on you too, man, and you carry it everywhere you go. So, you, you know, you not only can they hear what you're saying, they have fucking GPS location markers of everything you're doing. So it's like, you can't win, man. You can't win. You either got to fucking go back to the 90s or just, just say, well, I guess the government knows everything I'm fucking doing now, you know? Well, yeah, part of it, though, too, for me is I'm not so into the voice command because, like I said, I'm more active. I want to get up. I'll go turn on my stereo because that's what it takes. Oh, you yeah. Know? I mean, half the time I'm flipping records or anyways. I like listening to records. We love the record player. Except for the ones that skip all the time and you get hair on the needle and whatever else. But no, no, we part we, of it, you know. Fuck that. We got the whole cleaning kit and everything and some techniques and shit, man. We love it, man. It's like a little hobby. Fucking cleaning records and making our shit sound good. What are you listening to right now? Um, well, kind of most of the, you know, I'm kind of old school. I like Sabbath, but as new as I get, I mean, I'm talking Morbid Angel, Cannibal Corpse or whatever. I mean, I can't say that any new bands have really made me jump out and get excited. But at the same time, I'm not really researching those. But if someone, you know, says, hey, you got to check out this band, I will. But more often than not, I'm not. I'm not, like, too excited about it. Yeah. But some, I'm sure someone's got to come along. There's got to be some young kids that have nothing better to do than kick ass at their instruments. But I think at this time, you know, most of the guys are just, you know, they're into their uh, computer music and getting those silly hats on, and um, which is that may be the way to go. I mean, hey, they're making a living doing this. I'm not. Yeah. I do this. You know, I love music so much, and I'm doing it for fun. Um, but... I'm definitely not going to be one of those guys playing in front of uh, 8 million people. And um, it's kind of strange. I mean, the, the little bit of, uh, you know, of that type of music that I have seen, there's just seas of people. And there's one guy there with a little desk and a laptop. And I guess if that's what it takes, I mean, way to go. But that's that's not really, that's not physical enough for me. I want to feel like I'm physically doing something. Besides pressing a button on an iPod or whatever. And I mean, I know they go like this with their arms once in a while, but there's more than that. Yeah, you know, and it's uh, it's more of a brand. And, uh, you know, the kids don't care that there's any musicianship involved anymore. And, and they just want to go fucking dance at a big production number, you know? Which is funny why everyone wants to talk shit on fucking Kiss or anything like that, because now that's all it is. It's just the big production number. It's like, here's a bunch of fucking video and, and maybe pyro, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just fucking dance music to do drugs to and a bunch of lights. So it's, uh... Well, they do keep it exciting, though. I, um, I haven't personally been to a Kiss concert, but a friend of mine went, and he said once, you know, what, about the middle of the set when it kind of started getting... You know, I wouldn't say mundane, but kind of like, all right, you know, then they really upped the lights. They brought out more fire, more everything. So they're really. Oh, yeah. I think they by now they know how to keep you, you know, locked in. They're the best. They were they were always the best, man. Like, you don't fucking you don't you don't follow Kiss. You know, that's show's fucking over when Kiss is done. They just got done putting on so many millions of dollars worth of production value that's just so over the fucking top it's amazing you know you, you can feel the fire from anywhere in a stadium oh like, yeah there's so much pyro like you can be in the very back nosebleeds and you can feel that shit all the way well yeah there. you you cannot follow those guys no. but i don't think you can open for them either i don't think they have opening bands right they just get out there and they're the show that's it you know that's uh that's usually how it rocks at a kiss concert you show up and it's just like uh it's fucking three hours of kiss or well however many they can put on you know at this point they're they're getting up there man but uh fuck it was fun i went and saw the last concert i'll probably go see it again if they come back through with it uh to vegas i mean i don't see why i wouldn't buy tickets to that again that was such a fun time and uh they never disappoint man they never disappoint i have seen them play with Aerosmith. It no was, way. Yeah, it was Kiss and Aerosmith. And I have to say, Aerosmith was fucking incredible. And No shit. Steven Tyler's out there jumping all around, and is he still doing the cartwheels and uh, all that? Uh, he wasn't doing cartwheels or any of that shit, but he was, uh, he was fucking getting it, man. That whole band, that's a really good band. They were really good live. And to, to oh, yeah. be able to stand next to Kiss 
and and hold your own is is a lot man because kiss it, it, you know say what you want about their their records and their their whatever man but th their fucking live show is it's untouchable man it's just so much it's so friggin much i just love it i love it to well, death. yeah and now is the time to get out there and see all these great bands uh we just saw um, the final show of uh, Black Sabbath recently, Ozzy fucking kicked ass. He's getting real old. Every picture I see of Ozzy, man, just, yeah, it's, uh, that guy's getting fucking up there. How old is he now, do you know? He must be in his mid-70s, but whatever he's doing, he's just keep doing it. I think he's getting better. I think he finally got his medication and stuff worked out. Like, you could probably Good. tell when they had the Osborne show, he was a total mess. Fuck yeah. And um, I know a lot of it is uh, his very, very, very heavy English accent, which no one ever brings up. I mean, even if he's in tip-top condition... It's difficult to understand these guys. They don't talk the way we do. They have their own thing going on. Yeah. And so a lot of people will say, hey, I don't know what the hell he's saying. You know, it's like, well, you couldn't you're understand not him. He's fucking sober anyways. Yeah. The guy just, he, you know, he's, and he's a mumbler on top of it. You know, like, even with his British accent, he's also fucking mumbling the whole thing. But, I mean, that's what happens when you fucking do drugs for 40 years as heavily as that motherfucker did, right? You're not exactly well, yeah, man, uh, no anymore. one really knew, you know, I I was thinking, who will live longer, Dio or Ozzy? Oh, yeah, I know, right? And, uh, you know, I do think Dio, Dio had some years on him. I don't know if you've uh, seen seen any of his old vintage yeah. material, but he was in a couple, like, kind of doo-wop type bands. Oh, really? Like, almost like a Motown, like a R&B type of style. Um, yeah, look that up sometime. It's really cool. Yeah, because even in Dio's, like, heyday, that motherfucker was going bald. You know, like, he was, in, he was an old dude when he was singing back in the 80s, man. You know, he wasn't one of those younger kids. He was one of those older guys. Not at all, yeah. Got, he definitely had a lot there, of experience. You know? Yeah. Dio rocked. Fucking awesome. So how was that Black Sabbath concert, man? I didn't, uh, I didn't get to it go to that It was pretty, pretty unbelievable, man. Um, I couldn't believe it, but, I mean, they played so well. No one missed a note. Ozzy kicked ass. His uh, teleprompter, excuse me, teleprompter, is that what it's called? Yeah. His teleprompter was doing all right because he seemed to get all the lyrics. I mean, all the old guys have those now. Of course. That's why when you, well, when you see Judas Priest, you know, you'll always see Halford like this looking down. He's looking at the teleprompter. Of course. But the, the only thing with the Sabbath show, I mean, it was so great. But by the time it ended, I couldn't believe it. Like, it went by way too fast. I was so into it. And then, like, I swear it went by in a half an hour, but it was probably about an hour and 20, something like that. But it went by way too fast for me. That's how I felt about Rush. And I was like, that's that's it? And then it, it had been three hours. Wow. <laughs> and we were just like, um, could they play for another three hours, please? You know, I know there's uh, a lot to ask, but, yeah, I'll sit here for three more fucking hours and listen to some more Rush. Well, yeah, I imagine you're a pretty good, uh, you know, Getty Lee fan and everything and love that guy. I mean, you guys kind of have some similarities. I mean, you shred the bass and sing at the same time. I mean. Oh, yeah. Getty's a big inspiration for sure, man. But, uh, yeah, like the whole band is just fantastic, man. You know, Alex is amazing. Neil's amazing. And, uh, yeah, they just kill it. Neil Peart. Neil Peart. R.I.P. Everyone says this last name different. I don't know. I'm going with Peart at the moment. For years, I said Pert. I always said Pert, right? It was like, I, I thought it was <laughs> Neil Pert, Alex Lifeson, not Leifson, or is it I think Leifson? it's Lifeson. It's Lifeson, right? And, I think so. Yeah, and Getty Lee, man. Fucking Rush. What a killer, what a killer band. Power Trios are the those, best. Those guys rule, man. I got to be honest, though, I did not get Rush at first. It took me some time. Uh, I think more than anything, it was disappointed that the singer wasn't a chick. Oh, right. I know. He does sound. He does. But sound I'm over like it him. now. I'm over it, man. And I will bow down to Rush. They kick ass. Yeah. They're one of the best bands of all time. They weren't, you know, they weren't there for the, for everybody. They, I think they were there for the other musicians, man. You know, the guys that were up there fucking working on, on their riffs and, and getting their chops up. And it's like, they're like, you want to see some fucking chops, baby? You know, like, I love bands oh, like yeah. that, man. 
anybody that wants to push their technical skills all the way to the fucking edge, man, and, and then write music at that level is just, I love it. They're okay on my, on my book, in my book, something like that. Well, yeah, I think there's some bands that try to be technical on purpose. I think those guys, that's just how they play. They're yeah. so good. Right. I mean, there's, it's all about the song for them. Even if they are shredding, they got something to work from. They're not just spitting out notes and uh, do, they're not doing anything to show off. Yeah, one of the best bands ever, man. I love that fucking band. And Black Sabbath, too, man. Those guys fucking killed. That was my first concert uh, ever. My first big concert, Black Sabbath, man. Oh, no shit. Awesome. That, it was my first concert, yeah. too. I saw him back in 99. And guess who was opening? Who? Pantera. Oh! Yep. Damn. Yeah, I got to see the man Dime Jam. And I wasn't really a big fan until I saw them live. And it is amazing to see him play i mean yeah it is yeah. effortless he's not even trying no but no. it sounds perfect you know he used to uh he got banned from guitar competitions man growing up by the time he's like 15 he was going all these competitions and winning them over and over and over again and they were just like we're gonna make you a judge bro because you can't just keep taking the fucking trophy from everybody nobody wants to fucking compete against you you know because you just He's just a prodigy, man. Some people were just born with that, and that guy, that dude definitely, I mean, he, of course, practices ass off to get those skills, but, I mean, dude, yeah. Well, I mean, everyone else is practicing, too, but some people have a gift. I mean, how would you they feel do. all year? You're thinking, this guitar competition, I'm going to get it down. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull it all out, pull out all the stuff, and then you get there, and he's there. Yeah. What are you supposed to do? You're just like I give up now, you know. And then he was he was he was ruining guitar competitions for people when he was a little kid, man. You know, like, and his fucking brother, yeah. you know, fucking Danny. Yeah, Paul. his guitar playing is like totally over the top, but so is his personality. I mean, everyone that has anything to say about him, it's always positive. Oh yeah, it's like the life of the party, making everyone laugh all the time. And whenever I got to I hang know, out I with think... him, he was just the nicest fucking dude in the world, man. I mean, he, oh, I, I've no never shit. met a nice, nicer person in my life, man. Like, that guy's just so fucking cool. And he was just breaking his, his wallet to make sure the whole bar was just getting wasted with him. Like, if he was... Oh, damn. If he's going to do a shot, he's going to buy a shot for everybody around him, even if he knows you or not, man. Like, the guy's just the nicest fucking dude. He just loves Damn, everybody. that's really cool. Did you happen to get any, like, one-on-one uh, -on -one time with him? Like, get uh, ask any questions or anything? Nah, man. We would just smoke a little and drink a little and you know it's just it wasn't like uh you know personal time with dime is party you know partying it's fun yeah i mean i don't really get starstruck or anything but i don't know i would i wouldn't mind you know sitting you know with maybe a couple different guys that i really really respect just to kind of like just hang out and just see what they're like you know yeah it's fun man and, and i've gotten to been fortunate enough to to get to do that along the uh the years with a lot of uh people i grew up loving man uh, i remember uh one of my favorite stories was uh don doc and i got to kick it with that dude for like fuck, 45 minutes to an hour backstage uh he didn't want to go on you know he was he was kind no of shit. yeah he was just like he was coming back he hadn't fucking toured in a while you know and you could tell he was, he was smoking a lot of cigarettes just chugging whiskey man but he just started telling me stories of the good old days and i was like man growing up like Dawkins always been one of those things like everyone would give me shit because i like fucking doc and it's like man fuck you dude like doc and rocks george lynch is an amazing guitar player and oh yeah he shred 80s for 80s butt rock dude i fucking love Dawkins. so well, you must uh, have got to meet uh, george lynch right because you used to oh, run yeah. sound at the club i mean uh, it seems like uh, all those old school 80s guys were coming through like actually just after i I uh, left Vegas and came back here to Eugene. Um, Jakey Lee came out of hiding and seemed to be all over the place. And I was kind of bummed to hear that all my friends from Vegas are hanging out with, he's pretty much my favorite guitar player. Yeah, he was going to the club a lot, man. Jakey's a good, good dude, man. He's a good dude. And he's, what is that? Wow, what's that fucking solo that he does? Uh, I want to say Bark at the Moon, or it was Off of Bark at the Moon. But man, I, so many guitar players would try to cover that shit and really good guitar players, you know what I mean? But it would just come out like shit. The, there's a fucking one part at the end of the solo 
Uh, that's just impossible. Oh, yeah. It's just yeah, impossible. Yeah, it's that long crescendo kind of run. Yeah. That's just shredding. That fucking part. Jesus, dude. Like, nobody can do it. Nobody can do it. Just Jakey Lee. He's the only dude I've ever seen actually do it. You know? And that's it. Fucking nobody else can ever do it. Well, yeah, I mean, I know there's some uh, there's some guitar sheet music and tabs and stuff out there for the solo, but I don't think it's right. I mean, you'd probably yeah. have to watch him play it and maybe uh, slow the camera down and really get in there. But, um, yeah, I think everyone that is a fan of his and plays guitar would love to nail that solo. I know I have tried. It's a hard solo. And it, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's probably one of the best solos of all time, but... It's yeah. not an easy one. I'd have to agree with you, man. Uh, like, after watching so many super phenomenal and efficient guitar players go after that one, and just one by one, just like, they're, they're, they get really close, man. But it turns into slop when it gets to that part, and it's just, that's, it's so hard to do. And, and I love that, that there's shit like that out there, you know? That's... It's one of those things. It's like uh, YYZ to go back to Rush again. You know, it's like a classic uh, example of one of those things that exists in the music uh, world. That's like a goal. It's like we can do that. You know, and uh, not everybody can or ever will be able to do certain things like that. And so, well, thank I'm you, glad. Jake, I mean, dropping the badass solo. I mean, stuff like that is great. I mean, you don't want everyone to be able to just do it. Then it wouldn't be that big of a deal. It would say, you know, yeah. I mean, come on. Blah. Really, I mean, that's why I like guitar so much is I think personality really comes through. You can even physically hit the same notes at the same time. But being that, you know, with a stringed instrument, um, I don't know. I think every everyone's uh, personality really comes through. Oh, big time, man. You can hand someone the same guitar and on the same rig and you know five different guitar players are going to sound different just from the way that they play and the technique that they use but then personally they have their own guitar their own pedals their own fucking amplifiers you know their own technique that combines into this really unique sound it's one of the it's one of the coolest things about like the electric guitar in uh, modern music today is is that it, it, there's basically infinite unique sounds you can make with a electric guitar or the timbre of your instrument you know the way you like your distortion the way you like it clean uh and it's just uh yeah i don't know it's 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 one of the coolest things about it man like as a bass player you know you, you can choose a few different options right and you and yeah you get unique tone uh out of different instruments and stuff but it's not the same thing as like guitar where there's just like so much variation across the board with it. And then you're just swapping pedals and doing all kinds of different shit as well. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was reading about Ted Nugent plugging into Eddie Van Halen's guitar rig, expecting to sound like Van Halen. But he didn't. He just sounded like Ted Nugent. Yeah. He's Ted Nugent, you know. It, it really reflects the, the the wavelength of the human being, you know, that that unique frequency that we create in the universe uh you know everything's a everything's a waveform and music is a, a great example of that and i in and yeah guitar players and musicians in general you know they put that unique wave out into the universe through through their instrument man and it's fucking really cool to hear you know i really been digging on drummers lately like i like listen to old listening to old uh funk drummers play live you know that dude's fucking getting it and that's a dude hitting those drums in time there's no cuts there's no edits you know it's just this is a fucking old live album that just we pushed record and ran the shit and then and i you can really get into a groove um you know i came out of doing a lot of digital drums making everything perfect and I'm like i got real sick of that shit real fast it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good to listen back to, you know? you know? I like that groove and the swing and the, you know, the, the, every hit's a little off when a human does it, you know? And some yeah. guys play ahead, some guys play behind, some guys stagger it, and, and it it's adds life to the whole experience of the drumming. And I've I just been loving that lately. Yeah, when it comes to rock and roll, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's got to no. be uh, somewhere in the ballpark, you're doing all right. Yeah, man. Yeah. Perfect is this. Uh, 
a terrible thing to and, chew for. Unless someone's out of tune, I can't stand that shit. Well, yeah, you gotta tune your fucking <laughs> guitar. Tune your guitar, goddamn it. It's, fuck. Yeah, that's the. Uh, that's one of the worst ones. I remember when I was interning out in Arizona at the Brick House Theater. Uh, I was just on stage, kind of like stage managing and doing monitors and shit like that. And this band came up, and none of them, they were just, it was super fresh. Might have been their first show ever. Uh, I mean, after what they did, um, you know, they, nobody had their instruments tuned. Like, nobody warmed up. Uh, and I was gasping. I'm like, where the fuck are your guitars? Like, because every band ever, you know, they're about to go on stage. You got your guitar on. You're tuning your guitar. You're going over that part and that one song that you really don't fucking have down. You know, there's all these things, that you, all these emotions going on. These guys are just like standing there with their fucking thumbs up their asses and their guitars in their bags. And it's like, hey, your guitars, <laughs> if you want to be a real fucking nerd about it, they, they need to get used to the humidity of the room that they're in, too. You know, you need to let them sit out in that uh, that humidity and the, the wood's going to warp for a little while and you're going to have to retune and retune. And uh, people just don't think about that kind of shit. But, uh, but that's what happens. And then they just fucking uh, packed their guitars, walked on stage, and started going, right? And I was like, fuck me. You're not going to tune your goddamn <laughs> instruments at all. And it was... Uh, Oh, it was it was atrocious sounding, you know. It was so bad they stopped. They played for like thirty seconds or so, and they were just like, "This isn't working." Um, now obviously, it's not working. But nobody brought a tuner. They didn't think about this at all. Uh, and uh, I had to go out on stage and tune their fucking guitars for them, like by oh, shit, by ear. Real quick. They didn't have tuners, and I was fucking. I pulled out my phone, you know, did it that way. But uh, and then I walked out, grabbed, you know, three instruments off of three guitar players and tuned it handed back to him in front of the crowd real quick and then they started playing again and i was like what the fuck just happened in this reality like that was real that was real well yeah i mean they're lucky you were there i mean there are probably some of those guys you know that care more about what they're looking like than yes. what they sound like which does happen in vegas from time to time sorry to say that happens i'm not calling anyone out <laughs> No, a lot of people are way more interested in their shtick and their costumes and the way they look and, and, and their fucking hair and their makeup and, and they just don't practice. And well, that is Well, that's why I like so that's obvious. why I like the uh, that Mini Kiss band. That's why they're so great. Yeah. They're f at least they're honest. Yeah. They they're yeah. I don't even want You know what you're going to get. Yes. You know exactly what you're going to get. And those guys are amazing. They do mini all kinds of shit, too. Like, they took that brand. Uh, I saw them do mini Village People. And I heard there's a couple other mini ones. But both Mini Kiss and Mini Village People, are, it's incredible. It's incredible. Oh, if you shit. have any I chance wonder... at all to see it, please stop, just drop everything you're doing and go see Mini Kiss and Mini Village People because it's fucking amazing. And it's super. Well, yeah. That's why we need to get things back to normal. Come on. Let's, let's get these, uh, these little guys off of their couches and uh, get them in action. Come on. Right, right. The one I need to see is Mac Sabbath. I know they have them at Dive Bar a lot. And I think I was actually getting geared up to fucking rent a PA for a Mac Sabbath show uh, right before this all went down. Uh, I was super fucking stoked. I was just like, oh, I want to see this band. Have you heard of Mac Sabbath? I uh, know. Uh, I haven't heard of them. What's their deal, man? What do they <laughs> What do they do? What are they all about? They play fucking Black Sabbath covers, but they uh, all dress like McDonald's characters. Oh, and they great. have like old 80s, like legitimate McDonald's fucking character suits that they would go to like the kids' birthday parties and they fucking play Black That's Sabbath killer, and get man. all bloody and shit. I don't know, man. I kind of, uh, if I had to guess, I'm going to guess now Grimace is the bass player. I think you are correct, sir. I think. I don't know why. Correct. I have a knack for these things. I don't know why I know these things. And I bet the Hamburglar is playing guitar. That would make the or most drums. sense, guitar right? Guitar or drums. Right? That costume you can move in. Right. And uh, Ronald is Ronald McDonald's singing, of course. Yeah, I, I knew Ronald's not going to do anything. He's not going to play an instrument. He's just going to get up there and be the star of the show as usual. Right? Fuck, I wish I could pull up some of their footage and play it for you i'm gonna have to hit those dudes up i bet i can get them on the show and then play some footage of them that'd be great yeah fucking new rules but uh oh actually i do have uh speaking of footage i do have some of your footage over here uh of one of their older bands too while we're speaking about music if we want to switch over to that real quick 
Uh, so we got uh, this is cruciation, and uh, this is chemical holocaust. Fucking metal, bro. A little bit, a little bit. I can dig it. I can dig it. Cruciation, chemical holocaust. So is that your current band right now, or? Uh... It is. Yeah, I'm with those guys. I uh, decided to start up another project as well. But yeah, we had that band since maybe 2012. Uh, that's from a demo we did a few years back. Right now, we're working on a full-length album, but it's taken some time. We're obviously having a delay now. We would uh, like to get back to it, though, pretty soon and wrap it up. I think we got all of the basic tracks down. We're just doing some, uh, you know, guitar solos, maybe vocals on one more song. Then we'll continue to mixing, and things usually go slow around here, so I'd be happy if it's done in three or four months. Nice, man. Well, I look forward to hearing that, brother. I look forward to hearing that. That's awesome. Well, yeah, and... Uh... Shit, speaking of uh, wrapping it up, it looks like we just hit the hour mark, man, which is definitely uh, definitely a long-ass podcast for us. So let's, uh, right on, let's start moving towards the end of this here and uh, stay on the line with me, man. We'll fucking chat for a few more minutes after this. And, uh, sure. Well, I want to just appreciate you uh, or say uh, thank you to Ray Eversol for coming on the uh, To The Fullest podcast with Jason Froberg. Uh, yeah, and can, they got any uh, social media spots or anything you can get hit up on, or you do in that? Well, we pretty much just have like a Facebook page. You probably find us on Bandcamp or something like that. Nice. Bandcamp. Well, uh, I'll, I'll get the links going. I'll put them in the description page, and uh, yeah, I'll put them right below there. You can check out all kinds of links and everything like that, and uh, yeah, Ritual Tattoo out in Eugene, Oregon. I want to just thank you again, brother, and uh, appreciate having you on the show, man. We'll have to have you back. Thanks for taking the time. Thank have you. a good one, Jason. Hey, you too, Ray. Let's play it out with a little uh, cruciation. <laughs>
Hey everyone, thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.